What's going on there guys? Good Monday evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video tonight. Uh, pretty active day over the course of the last 24 hours or so. Uh, it is Monday night, uh, May 9th, 2022, about 7.37 p.m. California time. And uh, some activity out there ramping up around the Peru Chile Trench, including a little swarm of movement. I'd say a pretty good sized swarm of activity up and down the Peru Chile Trench and uh, pretty much globally. Let's go ahead and check out the activity over the last 24 hours. Uh, we did have some rather large quakes over here along the western uh, part of the Pacific Plate and also the western part of the Philippine Plate uh, and also down into the uh, Philippine Trench area. Of course, that's been over the last 24 hours, but today we did see a 6.3 in the Japan region and also just off the coast of Taiwan, 6.3 and quite a few fives and fours in there as well. I did see a little bit of movement up off the coast here of the Japan Tokyo region uh, Japan trench area did see some further movement as well uh, we did see a pretty large earthquake this originally came in as a 6.0 and I could have swore these guys upgraded to 6.5 and now downgraded to 6.3 uh, for this earthquake around the Papua New Guinea area very shallow movement uh, but uh, definitely a strong shaker 5.3 and aftershock sequence so far in that region uh, following all this activity, deep movement and subsequent surface activity up here, finally starting to see some movement here along the Kermadec Trench, but a 5.2 I don't believe is sufficient release of pressure uh, for what's been built up here over the last few weeks or so. Definitely going to watch this area of the Kermadec Trench uh, for some possible large-scale movement, uh, but a 5.2 definitely not enough uh, to release any significant pressure that's been building up. Uh, there's the activity into the South America region. Look at that. A line of activity up and down the Peru-Chile Trench. The latest quake shows a 4.9, 100 kilometers down into the subduction zone of this trench area. And uh, quite a few deep quakes in this area over the last 24 hours. Look at that. I had one uh, down here at about uh, 141 kilometers into the area. A lot of movement up and down this area. So... Uh, major player again of uh, producing some significant large quakes although I think up here um, I know we've seen some earthquake activity in the 7 range here a few months back inland around the Peru area but I, we haven't seen any sufficient uh, significant activity here in this section yet so good possibility I kind of like to look at the last 30 days of activity and uh, see which areas have and haven't moved uh, we can go the 30 days and whatnot uh, check out this 4.5 map and above uh, New Zealand area we did have a little bit of swarming here uh, I think the largest was back uh, what was that 5.5 a little bit further up north uh, and swarming a lot of times swarming does kind of point towards uh, you know possibly something bigger happening in an area although in this case it didn't uh, I think the largest quake was at 5.5 so far in that cluster uh, but I'm still watching this area pretty closely here for some further movement uh, South America region, uh, aside from the activity today, looks like over the past of, past 30 days or so, 4.5 and above, um, seen some movement, but uh, again, nothing significant, nothing above the 6.0 threshold. Largest one was a uh, 5.2 uh, in this area, just off the coast of Santiago, Chile area. So uh, definitely got to watch that region. If you notice here on the map, look at this. How is the West Coast so darn quiet? You know, it's like they, it, I mean, I guess that's, a, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it's definitely building up out here. But uh, look at that. For a major plate boundary, and I know there's slip rates uh, up here that are pretty high into the West Coast region and, of course, the subduction zone, but it's just been all too quiet. Every other place around the Pacific Ring of Fire gets hit except for the West Coast. So looking at the activity today, though, we did have a little ramping up of movement uh, just east of San Diego, out here in the middle of the mountains, desert, though. Uh, seen some activity, a little swarming. Okay, we got 21 earthquakes uh, today. Most of it was today, earlier this afternoon. Uh, we also seen a 3.5 in that mix of earthquakes. And look at those depths there. They're 13 kilometers deep some of them are that's uh that's pretty crazy so something going on there a little uncertainty 
It is on uh, an unnamed fault system. We checked this out earlier in our update. It is not specifically on the Elsinore fault system, which extends up here to the north, but a little separate, uh, well-constrained, unnamed fault system here in the mountains. So uh, we haven't seen anything within the last hour, but it uh, doesn't mean it's over. So still got to watch this movement here in Southern California. Uh, San Jacinto fault area, seen a little swarming up and down the fault system, which is very typical for that uh, area. And a little movement up here outside of the Cotton Mountain or Cottonwood Mountain area. Looks like a 1.6 and a 1.3 earthquake. Pretty shallow movement on the North American side of that plate boundary. Uh, looking up north, we did see some activity also inland too. Had a 3.1 near the Independence, California area. This earthquake came in right about the time we were swarming down here in the southern part of the state. Uh, but no subsequent activity within this region following that 3.1 earlier. A little activity around Long Valley Super Volcano, but that was also, uh, this was actually earlier this morning before, before all the uh, activity kicked up there in Southern Cal. Uh, what else we got? Outside of Tonopah, a little swarming once again in this section here across the Candelaria Hills, across Highway 3, to some twos and some small microquakes out there today. Northern California, quiet. Oregon, quiet. Uh, one earthquake outside of Portland, it looks like here. Had a 1.4 on the Washington side. 15 kilometer deep earthquake. Some movement outside of Mount Rainier as well. And uh, a little activity east of the Cascades here around the Yakima. Got a 1.0. Uh, Idaho, Yellowstone, uh, not a whole lot going on over here around this area. Looks like, a, well, a little swarm over here, just some twos. Of course, this is very typical here in this area of the Sawtooth Fault System. Yellowstone over here in Wyoming, not a whole lot going on. We will check that right off the bat just to see if we got anything uh, popping up here. And uh, doesn't look like there's much. Maple Creek area did see a little activity earlier uh, this morning. During that time frame here, a couple small quakes. Aside from that, though, nothing significant going on there at Yellowstone National Park. Most of the activity confined to the west coast. Uh, same for Texas and Oklahoma. Just really spotty out there in the southern plains. North or South Carolina did see some swarming kicking up here. In this area that uh, seen some swarming a couple months back. It's, these swarms kind of come and go. Um, and I'm uncertain on the uh, specific fault systems that run through here. Uh, but we did have a 3.3 just outside of Columbia, and uh, that was felt broadly throughout the area. A couple other microquakes uh, following that 3.3. Uh, last earthquake was the uh, 2.1 at 2200 UTC time, so about five hours ago. So no subsequent activity in that area since then. Uh, Puerto Rico area, some activity around the southwestern portion of the, uh, of the area. This one here in the uh, Haiti area was from last night, I believe. Uh, let's see, when was that? 1645? Uh, earlier this morning, it looks like. Uh, let's see what else we got. Caribbean plate, pretty quiet. One earthquake off the coast. Take that back. A double earthquake out here. One was hiding off the coast here. We're inland a little bit. Guatemala area, 4.5 and a 4.6 deep into the Middle America Trench. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check out the movement here on the Big Island. I'm starting to see a little activity ramping up. A little, little bit of movement stretching towards the Lohi Seamount offshore of the southeast flank region. And some movement outside of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, Mauna Loa, some movement. Uh, looks like a 1.9 and a 1.2, although earlier. Much, much, much earlier uh, in the day. So not a whole lot of new activity to report there on the Big Island. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, man, just, I tell you, with all this swarming activity, let's look at the last 30 days, 4.5 and above. Of course, if you remember, we've seen quite a few sixes through here. Lots of swarming in separate locations here, kind of giving us an indication of the uh, extreme buildup of pressure here uh, along the Philippine Plate, the Philippine Trench, the Mariana Trench as well. Got to watch these areas that have not really shown any movement in the last 30 days uh, for 4.5 and above. You got to think about that because all this warming, all the sixes around it, 
certain areas to watch. There's still a section of the Mariana Trench out here that has not seen any sufficient movement. Uh, another area that kind of watching here is the Crow Kamchaka Trench northward. Uh, we did see a little bit of swarming. It looks like some fours and fives there over the last um, 30 days. Some of it deep as well, just only adding to the further stress here in this region of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Uh, the Aleutian Trench over here as well hasn't really seen any sufficient uh, movement. And of course the West Coast area, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, maybe everything's fused together out here. Maybe this is uh, no longer, no, we can't, can't say that because we know that it's moving. We just haven't seen, uh, uh, I guess we haven't seen the sufficient pressure built up to, to cause a major earthquake out here along the West Coast. Although I believe it's strongly there. Just a matter of time. Uh, trimmer map tonight. We'll go ahead and check that out. It's kind of late, almost 8 o'clock right now. I didn't mean to make such an, a late update. Uh, Northern California and Washington area. Looks like a, those sections of the Cascadia subduction zone shown a little activity. Nothing, so, nothing major, though. Uh, and I do want to check out a couple volcanoes. The Mount Rainier area, since they were swarming a little bit. Uh, earlier today, kind of want to see if there's any renewed activity here at the volcano, Mount Rainier. And uh, let's see, hello, hello, what's going on? Are we there? We go. So a little activity, some spotty movement there. Looks like some microquakes uh, within the last couple hours, and throughout the morning and afternoon time frame. Look at those S waves. This is, here is from the. 6.3 uh, that struck off the coast of Taiwan late last night. And here's the sixes uh, that struck today, creating quite the wave, uh, frequency wave across the globe. And this is in, in the uh, Washington area. Let me go over here to the next day and uh, kind of mellowed out a little bit. Uh, but wow, it's amazing what those uh, frequency waves can do. When, when you get a big earthquake like that, they travel throughout the globe pretty nicely. So uh, not a whole lot going on. A couple small specks of microquakes there at the volcano, Mount Rainier. We will check out Mount St. Helens real quick and see if we got anything uh, popping up there. And again, a little, little pause before, there we go. Uh, a couple hours ago, yeah, we had a little small microquake. Uh, let's check out the afternoon time frame. Again, the S waves showing up here on the Mount St. Helens station as well as they travel through the Earth from thousands of miles away. Looks like a couple small microquakes, although no major swarming to report. Just a handful of small, very small earthquakes at Mount St. Helens. Uh, earthquakes Canada map tonight. Head up to the north and see what's going on. Got, uh, wow, actually got a little bit of activity striking up here off the coast of the, uh, let's see where we're at here. Look at this little swarm of activity. That's some pretty good movement. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Looks like a 4.3 near the Port Clements, BC area. This one pretty shallow, 2.9. Looks to be the largest in this little sequence of earthquakes there off the uh, off the Cape, what is that, Cape Ball area? Haven't really covered too much in this region. Uh, it is well inland off the Pacific and the North American plate, but definitely on the North American side here uh, where this swarm of activity is kicking up. I'm not for sure if I can put this in a list or not, but... Uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty good, nice little swarm. It's been a while since we've seen any earthquake activity kicking up here in this region, but uh, it's there. Cascadia subduction zone is going to be this blue line here southward. Uh, not a whole lot striking on that area. Some further back building of pressure off on the explorer plate here, looks like. I believe that's, yep, explorer plate. And a little activity inland. This here is probably associated with the Cascadia depths. The depths there at 18 kilometers deep for some microquakes. Uh, 26 kilometers deep as well. So uh, definitely some subduction zone activity there on the northern end of the Cascadia uh, in recent days. Uh, pretty active throughout the BC. And, uh, and what do we got here? 
couple small microquakes up there, but I'm, I'm noticing a definite uh, trend of uptick in the northern part here of the Canada region. Eastern part looks pretty quiet, nothing lighting up in the red circles or purple circles, most of it confined here to the, uh, the western coast of the BC area. Solar weather tonight, uh, we are seeing uh, possibly some sunspots. What did I just jump in here? Hold on a second here. Hit the wrong, uh, hit the wrong window here. There we go. Um, let's see, what do we got? Let's see if this image is working yet. No, it's not. I don't know. Well, there we go. Uh, so it looks like a couple sunspots developing here on the far eastern side of the sun. Uh, we'll be rotating in the view. This sunspot here is spectacular looking with its dynamics and whatnot. It's huge, but it is not complex in terms of producing anything significant, folks. Um, look at 3007 over here. It's not even all that uh, awesome looking either. So I'm hoping things will pick up. Right now, these guys forecasting an 80% chance of a C flare, 30% chance M flare, 5% chance of an X flare, which I think is, uh, I think that's about uh, a good call for these folks. Just looking at those dynamics, so. Uh, nothing going on in the three-day geomagnetic forecast there. It looks green across the board, so uh, not a whole lot of hope for the uh, auroras up there in the northern latitudes. All right, guys. I'm going to bounce out of here. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. I know we put a, quite a few videos out today because there was quite a bit of action, so more than likely uh, you guys probably won't, or some of you may not get a... Uh, a notification on this update video so uh, hopefully you guys will uh, share it and send it out to um, social media outlets and also uh, just give it a thumbs up while you're here that will help the algorithms with YouTube putting the video out even without notifications so put it out in the uh, browse features and whatnot so alright guys stay safe and we will chat you a little bit later on have a good one peace out